I remember it pretty well. I was seven years old. Uh, this I was living in New York City at the time, and there were a lot of kids on my block, and all of them I considered my friends. That was kind of the thing for me when I was a kid, is that I made friends extremely easily. And I wanted what all the rest of my friends were doing. I wanted to have a sleepover. Um, again, I was seven, and I was talking with my friends. They were all like, yeah, we should have a sleepover. That would be great. I mean, these are people that I was playing with on a daily basis. So I went to my mom and asked her if I could have a sleepover at one of my friend's houses. And she just was avoiding subject for a bit and eventually said no. The relationship my mom and I had when I was a kid was one that I was encouraged to ask why. It's the concept of talking back being a bad thing is drives me up the wall. Um, Kids should ask why. That's important for them to understand why things are the way they are. So I asked why, and she responded with, well, it's because, well, your friends are all girls, and you're a boy, and that wouldn't be right. Welcome to the label series on gender and gender identity. As a reminder, um, this is the label series where I talk about labels that a person or society gives upon an individual or group of individuals. In this case, I'm talking about gender and gender identity. Once more, as a reminder, I am, for all intents and purposes, a male uh, cisgendered white guy. Um, that means that I'm going to have biases that aren't necessarily obvious. So I'm talking about things from my own perspective. I'm not talking about things how the way the world works or the way the world should be or anything like that. This is all just coming from me, my perspective, and growing up. And I'm doing this through the lens of the concept of a label. Um, this is actually not the video that I intended to record next. The video I was intending to record next was on race and ethnicity, but I don't feel comfortable making it. So rather than delay this even longer, because it's already been over a year since I introduced the label series and I haven't recorded any of them yet, I am doing this video. Uh, this video is on gender and gender identity. The next video will be on romance and sexuality. And in order for me to do the video on romance and sexuality, I need to do this video on gender first. Once more, a warning. Everything is coming from the perspective of me growing up. This is not to indicate that this is the, world, the way the world works. This is my perspective being a cisgendered white guy. Sort of. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, and I'm going to have a more simplistic version of the world than a lot of other people. So, I'm trying. Um, also, you will notice that I will be talking about an individual later on in this video. The individual has said okay for me talking about the things that I've talked about. If this video goes live on YouTube in public, that means that that individual has agreed and has allowed me to show that. Or talk about it, I should say. All right, let's get to it. So, I was inked when I had the concept of labels introduced to me. This was after I'd moved from New York back to South Florida. And one of the very first things that I caught on, in fact, I was actually in the conversation with my mother about the idea of a label when I asked, so does that mean boy and girl are labels? She responded with yes, that would be a form of a label. Eight-year-old me, I am actually proud of eight-year-old me. I realized really quickly that people can have more than one label. I mean, obviously I did. Why in the world wouldn't other people? So that might mean that boy and girl weren't mutually exclusive. Maybe you changed your label over the years. Maybe you had both labels at the same time. Maybe they would change back and forth repeatedly. These concepts were like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So I'm actually proud of eight-year-old me and realizing that trans people can exist and that Gender fluid people can exist. I did not realize about the whole non-binary and or any other gender beyond man, woman, that type of thing until later. So you will notice that I am going to have a very strict binary focused thing up into a much later age. That's because, again, that's the way I saw the world. So 
eight-year-old me realized trans people existed. I'd never met one that I knew of. I'm pretty sure some of my friends, in hindsight, I'm pretty sure some of my friends were trans. But I didn't realize that at the time. And, well, I kept going through the world. I was a boy. That was the label that was assigned to me. Um, I wouldn't always have that label assigned to me. My voice was very high-pitched as a young kid, even for being a young kid, to the point where on the phone, people assumed that I was a girl. And I got tired of correcting them really fast, so I just let it happen. These are just random telemarketers or people who were calling for my mom on the phone or anything like that, and it didn't matter. So I just let it happen. It's the first sign that I'll get back to later that my gender identity might be just a wee bit more or less complicated than it appeared. So, going a little further, we'll encounter the first thing that made me hesitant about the labels of gender, and that was the dreaded pink aisle. For those of you that are not in the United States and Canada, I'm not sure if this is a thing outside of North America or not. Heck, I'm not even sure if this is a thing in Canada, but I'm pretty sure it is. The pink aisle is the aisle in a toy store or a department store or any type of store that would have toys that was dedicated to girls. Everything would be hot pink. That color of hot pink right there. It is my least favorite color. It is garish. I can't stand looking at it. At least as a kid. Now I care a little less about it, but... I still don't really like the shade of pink that's on this wall. It's part of the reason why I'm recording in this room, actually. Um, the proverbial pink aisle. The reason why it bothered me was, one, it was hot pink. Hot pink is an ugly color. Sure, other people might like that color, but I don't. It repulses me. I don't really want to be there. Two, why in the world did girls have an entire and have those aisles dedicated to them? That didn't make any sense. Let's backtrack a little bit. So I had mentioned that when I was living in New York City, all of my friends were girls. That's because I was the only boy on the entire block at the time. Um, again, I'm pretty sure that some of those girls are actually trans. And I would today probably use he and him for pronouns for them. But I don't know that for sure because I've lost contact with all of them at this point. And at the time, they were definitely using she and her. So as being the only boy on a block full of girls that were my age, I played with their toys. I didn't have action figures and He-Man figure and G.I. Joes or anything like that. I played with dolls. I played with Barbies. I played with Barbie ripoffs because we were kind of poor and we didn't exactly have much in the way of toys for anybody on the block. I played with the toys that were on that proverbial pink aisle. And it's not that I had anything wrong with those toys. I like stuffed animals. I still do. I still have stuffed animals today. I am a 37-year-old guy. The concept of these things are only allowed to be played with by girls bothered me to the core. Why in the world were there toys that only girls played with? It did not take a brain surgeon to go to the next step of, wait, does that mean that there are toys that only boys can play with? Well, that's stupid. Why would a girl not want to play with a boy toy? What are boy toys, anyway? From the ages of about 8 to 10, I was trying to figure out what in the world boy toys were. And yes, I know boy toy is a different term. But bear with me, that was the terminology I was thinking of in my mind at that age. And... It led me to one inevitable conclusion. Society believed that girl toys were the things on the pink aisle, which meant the boy toys had to be the toys that weren't on the pink aisle because society didn't seem to like the idea of a toy being okay for boys and girls. I'm the type of kid who grew up with the... Um, there was a... I actually still have this particular uh, toy. I should probably try to find it at some point, but... Nah, I don't feel like it right now. Um, it's called My Bunny. And they used to have a commercial for it where they would show a boy going around with My Bunny and doing all, like, things that you would do with, like, a younger brother or a best friend or anything like that with basically a very large doll. A doll that was meant to be a boy. 
And then at the end of the commercial, at least for the newer commercials, this again, this was like 80s, early 90s, they would have Kid Sister. That was the girl version of the toy. It's the same toy as My Buddy But Pink. That commercial made me realize that, oh, other people think girls can't play with My Buddy, and that guy and that boys can't play with Kid Sister. But boys have sisters. I didn't. I didn't have any siblings. But boys could have sisters. Why wouldn't they play with Kid Sister? And girls could use a buddy too, right? Gender skepticism is what I would call this today. Um, specifically the defined gender norms and how I didn't just not appreciate them. I was downright confused by them. I did not understand at all why anyone would care about these things. You're a kid. Play with the toys that you want to play with. Are the toys dangerous? No? Then play with them. Um, coincidentally, this might be part of the reason why I insisted on buying toys for my little cousins that were 12 plus years younger than me that were always not gender specific. I bought them blocks, I bought them Duplos, I bought them Legos, I bought them toys to build things. Because, turns out, all of my cousins on my father's side of the family are women. I am the only man. So every time that they would have a birthday, I would find the appropriate random building material type toy, because I always noticed that they seemed to prefer them, and buy more of those. So it might be trains, it might be blocks. The blocks might have various themes. It could be space themed, it could be home themed. I didn't care. It just seemed right. So age of 12, this would have been mid 90s when I had my, or when I had encountered, or when my eldest of my little cousins were born. So that was the point where I started thinking about these things and going, why, why does the pink aisle even exist? This doesn't make any sense. What is wrong with society to shove all of the girl toys onto one aisle? Why did they even gender a toy? And keep in mind, I still went on the pink aisle for things of my own. Again, I liked stuffed animals. Stuffed animals were frequently relegated to the pink aisle or to the baby section. Ugh. Anyway, let's go on a bit. So by this point, I had already had a healthy amount of skepticism for society and gender. Then came the internet. In my era of the internet, when I first went online, not just, well, I first went online on BBSs, so that predates internet. But anyway, I'm talking about actual, like, World Wide Web internet. I was always with the impression that you revealed as little about yourself as possible. If someone asks ASL, which is age sex, gen age, sex, location, you always answered with completely nonsensical things that were obviously incorrect, which is what I did. Um, that's how the running joke when I was a teenager of my gender was stainless steel came about. It's because I, that was a nonsensical answer and I just went with it. I never used he, him for my pronouns on the internet when I was younger. I used it. Now, I know today that it is not exactly a pronoun that you want to use to refer to a person. Believe me, I even back then I knew that it was derogatory to refer to a person as. I only used it to refer to myself. But that meant that my gender presentation, as it were, would be what I would classify today as non-binary. I wasn't expressively going for that or anything like that. Again, my concept was, I shouldn't give out personal information on the internet, I'm just going to be nonsensical, and I'm not giving out personal information then. That's fine, right? There's a bit of an after effect from that. Um, namely, I became somebody on the internet that people trusted by virtue of the fact that I didn't judge anyone's gender. I just assumed that everyone else was doing the same thing. They were lying. And I was on the internet. What difference did a person's body make for how I'm interacting with them? I'm never seeing them. I am only seeing what they post in plain text posts on the internet. So if somebody says that they are a woman, 
then they are a woman. If somebody says they are a man, then they are a man. Once more, I did not have a concept of non-binary genders at the time. I did have a concept of somebody who was gender fluid, which means if somebody claimed that they were a woman, and then later on claimed that they were a man, but were still the same person, then I went, oh, okay. Strangely, I actually had a fairly healthy concept behind these ideas at the time. And that was around the time that I met the first person that I knew of at the time that was trans. Um, once more, there may have been people from younger parts of my childhood that were trans and I didn't know it, and probably still don't know it. So this was the first person I ever met who was trans. Uh, she explained to me what that meant. She was going to go through bottom surgery somewhat soon at that time. At least that's what she said. I no idea for sure. Again, the internet. Assume everybody's lying to you. Um, unfortunately, that should have been a very positive experience for me in understanding how the world worked and changing my view of what labels people put on what. She primarily used transphobic language to refer to herself. Constantly. To the point where I didn't know there was anything not transphobic. Or, I didn't know that the was transphobic language, and I didn't know any language that wasn't transphobic. Oh boy, did that screw up my vocabulary so for so freaking long. Ugh. I mean, yes, this was the internet in the mid to late 90s. I understand the internet was a harsh place, and people were not exactly, shall we say, nice to each other on the internet. They still aren't. I know, this is a shock to everyone. But, dang did that mess up my language for a very long period of time. I apologize to every per trans person that I have spoken with from then up until, we'll just go perpetuity because I've still found various horrifically transphobic things that are in my vocabulary and not realize it until I'm about to say it and go, whoa, 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 what the hell? And reevaluate all of my life choices. Um, so I apologize to all of those people. Uh, huh. But, point was, hey look, there's a trans person. I didn't care what their gender was prior to me meeting them. As far as I knew, she was always her. She, her, were the pronouns that she uses. I interact with people on the internet at the time, primarily and exclusively actually through text-based means. So when I see someone use the terms she or her, that's what I use. I don't care if some random internet troll starts using he, him, other than the fact that she seems to be very insulted by that concept, which means there's something wrong with the troll. I didn't care. And that is actually the way I view pronouns today. If you introduce me using a set of pronouns, I will use that set of pronouns. If you tell me, no, I don't want you to use those pronouns, I want you to use these instead, I will use the new ones. My memory is a little wonky when it comes to that, and I'll get to that in a moment, but I will change. Yeah, I will occasionally mess up because of my memory, but I will stop, fix it, and continue, move on. That is what I've been told by lots of people that is what I will continue to do, unless if some authority tells me better. The memory thing's an interesting tidbit. It actually, um, well, I'll get to that story in a bit, because it relates to something else that happens a little bit later. So, um, I'm going through puberty at this point. And this is the point where my friends start changing in gender. Not that the friends themselves were changing their gender, just that my friend makeup was changing. Where up into puberty, most of my friends were women. I actually had more things in common with women than men. Or I should say, most of my friends were girls because they're underage. I'm going to use the term girl, not woman. And boys, I didn't have as much in common with. I didn't like sports, I didn't like cars, I didn't like any of those things. Uh, about the only thing I had in common were, for some reason, it was stereotypically a boy thing to like space. I don't know why. Space is awesome. Everybody should like space. Um, but yeah, I didn't have much in common. And that changed when I, around the time that everybody was going through puberty. 
and I'll get to more detail on that when I get to the romance and sexuality video. But long story short, this was the point where I had more friends who were boys or men by the time that I graduated from college or high school. Let's age up a little bit more. I, by the point that I went to college, I knew several people who were trans. I knew people who, I had now started hearing concepts behind genders that were not just man, woman. I didn't know anybody at the time, but I had started hearing and understanding those concepts. That's around the time that I met my partner. My partner is the person that I mentioned at the start of this video, who is, by the time that you are seeing this, unless if you're my partner, and if you're my partner, hi, um, my partner is approved of what I'm going to be saying. My partner is non-binary. They've always been non-binary. Their pronouns are they and them. And I curse my English teachers in high school for drilling into my head repeatedly that they and them are always plural. That was inaccurate. Not only is they and them a proper non-binary set of pronouns, because that's what you use when you're unsure of gender anyway, why in the world would you think that that's plural only? But also, they were originally singular. Damn it, English teachers. I know English is a crap language where we steal everybody's grammar at gunpoint, but come on. Anyway, um, again, my partner is they and them. I did not use they and them for my partner when I had first met them, which meant that there was an interesting situation in my mind. And this happens with everyone that I am, shall we say, corrected on pronoun usage part of the way through my life, where if I remember my partner from the point where they told me on, and I'm recalling a story about them, I will always use they and them. If I recall a story about my partner when I was using a different set of pronouns, my brain tries to use that set of pronouns. It attaches gender to time. What? <laughs> Oddly enough, that'd be really helpful for somebody who's gender fluid, but <coughs> not helpful for someone who's trans, not helpful for somebody who I got the wrong pronouns for initially. Um, so yeah, if you've noticed on various videos, I have used they and them when I refer to my partner. And I use partner, spouse, various non-gender specific terminology for my partner. It's because my partner doesn't have a gender. Not a part of the, not a part of the traditional bi gender binary. Hi, editor me here. I just wanted to clarify something because I did meddle my words a bit here. Um, my partner does have a gender. My partner just doesn't have a gender that exists on the stereotypical gender binary spectrum. Non-binary, hence the term non-binary. I did correct myself in the video, but I didn't feel right about leaving that part the way it is. And my partner called me out on it when I was having them watch this video. So just wanted to clarify. Okay, back to the video. Bye. My partner was the first non-binary person that I had met that I knew was non-binary at the time. Um, not the first non-binary person that I ever met. I've met two others prior to my partner, but anyway. Um, and how to describe. I always want to be kind. It is my goal is to be kind because it is easier to be snarky than it is to be kind. Everything that I do, my goal is to be kind, even to people that I consider my enemies. Now, I may not respect some people, but that doesn't mean that I will screw things up intentionally to insult them. There are certain things, like for instance, if I misgender someone, that is not just an insult to that person. That is an insult to everyone else who might be in a similar situation, everyone else who is not presenting as very obviously that gender. If I was a woman and had this beard and someone else had insulted me by calling me him, 
That is not right. I will not misgender someone intentionally. Even if it was Donald Trump, I will not do it. Unfortunately, some of my transphobic language would creep in from time to time, and that's when I would discover just how freaking nasty it was and eradicate it out of my mind. I even know what I'm trying to say right now. Um, I have made this video multiple times. Not just today, but years ago. Uh, this was actually one of the videos that I had recorded in my second Vita. And I messed it up. I messed it up bad. Um, I don't want to do that this time. I want to make sure I have things right. And that's the way I encounter and deal with gender today. It is a label. I don't care about the label that society puts on a person. I don't care that society calls me a guy. It is 0% relevant to my life. I accept that label by virtue of the fact that it is easier. If I had the label of a woman, my life would be significantly harder. If I had the label of non-binary, my life would be significantly harder. If I had the label of third spirit, my life would be significantly harder. If I had the label of any other gender, my life would be significantly harder. Since I personally do not care about my gender label, I don't care that society calls me a guy. In reality, I'm probably somewhere between a guy and non-binary. I just don't care. I am gender apathetic to me. Other people are a lot more picky about their gender, especially the ones that labeled themselves. If you have labeled yourself, I will do everything I can to reinforce the label that you have put on yourself. It means way more to a person who is trans to be called by their correct pronouns than it means for me. And I recognize that. I will never be able to feel the emotions of being labeled incorrectly. Because I don't care about my own gender label. I will never understand it on an emotional level, but I will absolutely understand somebody being excluded and feeling bad about being excluded. I will absolutely understand about someone having the wrong label about something else. So I will do my damnedest to use the correct label that you yourself have put on yourself. Trans people have a right to exist. People have a right to exist. Kitties, like this kitty right here, have a right to exist. Especially since he's indoors and thus not an invasive species outside. I have... I believe I have done a damn good job at extracting transphobic language from my personal lexicon. I don't know of any that's left. The last time I had encountered a random thought in my brain that I realized was using very heavily transphobic language was probably about four years ago now. There's probably still some in there that I'll stumble over at a various point. I'm now watchful enough of, over my own language where I don't expect it to actually be said out loud. I will notice it in my brain and go, what the hell? Get that thing out of here now and just banish it away, and or do research online to make sure I have the correct terminology. The terminology may change. It has changed dramatically over the past few decades, even just in my own lifetime. Terminology regarding gender has changed drastically. My terminology that I use today may not be accurate 10 years from now, but the terminology that I will use 10 years from now will be accurate for 10 years from now. That is the way I work. And the gender labels thing has changed. My perspective of basically not understanding why there was a pink aisle has evolved into why in the world is any toy gendered? Why is there anything that is not a person or being gendered? Yes, I will still use Isun as he, him, for Isun is a male castrated cat. 
Isun cannot tell me if those pronouns are incorrect. In fact, I'm pretty certain Isun doesn't understand the concept of a pronoun to begin with. I don't believe Isun even understands the concept of gender. Just biological stuff. And even the biological stuff is complicated. I mean, look at, what is it, male calico cats? Male calico cats aren't technically just male. They are, um, they're technically intersex. So trying to relate biology and gender together is just like trying to relate apples and a very large sponge together. They're not really related. Society will label someone based off of their apparent biological sex and label someone's gender based off of that. That's it. I don't see any other relation and that's just kind of meh. That's how I got labeled to be a guy. I don't really care. Again, I don't care about my own labels. I recognize that other people strongly care about theirs. And if you are a woman who is very much, I am a woman, hear me roar, I will absolutely recognize you as a woman. If you are a man, you are very much, roar, I am man, hear me roar, roar, then I will recognize you as a man. If you are something else, then I will recognize you as that something else. Me personally, I don't care. Call me she, call me he, call me they, call me it. I'm not going to care. I use he, him just because it's easier for me. Because it gives me my societal privilege that I just happen to have. Because I appear to be, what was it again? That's right, a cisgendered white guy. Hopefully this gives a good summary as to the way I view gender from growing up all the way to the present, where the present I view it purely as a label and a label that only that individual can give themselves. You said it is soon. Oh, I'm sorry, I covered up his cute little yawn. Oh, I have failed this video. Ooh, big stretch, big stretch. Yes, kitty cat, yes. Good kitty. If you have questions for me, please, um, wherever I've posted this, feel free to make a comment. Um, I'm not going to pretend that this video is perfect. I am absolutely certain that I will cringe about this video 10 years from now. And if I'm still making videos, maybe I'll make an update video. Who knows? Kitties. Love of kitties are not to be gendered. I wonder if that's the reason why my cousins had to do a double take when I just went with the immediate kitty when I saw the kitties while I was in Florida this week. Ah, <sighs> Anyway. I should probably stop this recording. It's already 32 minutes and 49 seconds. I'll stop it. Bye, Internet!